So where I left off last time was we had solved the optical orientation of the crystal and we determined possible crystallographic axes. But what we need to do now is measure the refractive indices. And I have a set of refractive index liquids. Um, they're a little bit older, but they're well taken care of. But the first thing that you want to do if you're really trying to be precise and accurate about having the correct refractive index liquids is check what their actual refractive index is. Even though the label says something, over time they may degrade due to the vapor pressure or what have you. Um, so what I have here is a critical angle refractometer and it has, it's equipped with gas discharge bulbs. So what this allows me to do is measure refractive indices at multiple wavelengths of light because refractive index is going to vary with temperature and wavelength of the incoming light. And of course we want to be able to control those two things or at least know what they are when we're measuring the refractive index of the oil. Uh, the spreadsheet has the option set up to do this type of calibration, uh, but it's specifically for this type of refractometer. It's just an example for other people. Uh, this is a Bellingham and Stanley critical angle refractometer. That just means that uh, it uses the critical angle to find the line where light refracts through and away from the liquid but yeah it depends this calibration depends on the wavelength of light and the refractive index of the prism as that changes with temperature and and the wavelength of light so there's a lot of factors to uh, keep track of so here we have the setup I'm using this liquid it's a 1512 as I found out this is about what I need to use for alpha and beta on scolocyte. It has the characteristics listed on the side for different wavelengths of light for what the refractive index is and you can enter those in. Uh, the main label is the refractive index at 589.3 and at 25 degrees C. And then those other ones are for other wavelengths of light and I'll show you that on, that on the spreadsheet. And this is a thermocouple so that I can make sure what the temperature is near the uh, refractive index liquid. Here's my multimeter for the temperature set on this thermocouple and I'm going to turn the light down or dim the lights here so that it's easier for me to see the fringes. So here is an example of what a fringe looks like after I've moved the coarse dial into the line of the 589 wavelength. So everything on the black side is refracting away. So, and this is the measurement of the other eyepiece. So it's like 14.2, yeah, 14.2 and then moved over with the fine dial, which is the upper dial, back. And the way that this readout works is that, okay, that is 14.2 and then 0 on the fine dial, 8, and then you can estimate that last bit as about 5. So 14.2085 for that entry. So I'm just going to enter that in and once you make that measurement, check what the temperature is and then enter that in. Enter the DNDT of the liquid, which is on the label. That's just the change in refractive index per the temperature. And then this is the calculation for this refractometer because the prism refractive index wave, uh, varies with wavelength and temperature. So I'm entering 589.3 for this measurement. 
because that's the gas discharge, discharge bulb I'm using for uh, sodium. Enter in the uh, critical angle and the temperature. And you just repeat this process over and over again with the other gas discharge bulbs. I just select the top uh, five measurements that are easy for me to see the, the lines uh, for those wavelengths. And they're, they're listed on their website usually. Um, but yeah, these are the, the lines that I'm using. You can expand this to include more measurements if you want. You just have to increase the dimensions of the matrix. Uh, and then it'll calculate those Cauchy constants. And then it'll also interpolate an equation uh, Yeah, using those Cauchy constants. This is the plot of how the refractive index varies with wavelength. Onto the cargo label. Uh, these entries are for a different liquid. This is for a 151 liquid. So I just have to clear these. And I'm going to enter in the characteristics listed on this uh, bottle. So these are all at a, a standard temperature. And all of this is corrected for in, in temperature and everything. So enter these in. And OK. So this tab, this cargo label tab, you can use these Cauchy constants for your measurements, especially if they're new refractive index liquids, those will be really accurate. But here's the difference in this one, and it's, it's a, a reasonable difference, especially at the uh, longer wavelengths here. Um, so it's a good idea to have new uh, a recalculation of those uh, the optical properties of the liquid after over time. But anyway, I'm going to use that liquid to measure the alpha refractive index of this crystal. Uh, this is in the right orientation. So east-west, this is the east-west line. Uh, alpha is sitting in the east-west line, but I have to change the oil cell to this uh, heating one. So this has some, this has a thermocouple probe in the oil cell and it also has heating wire through it. So it passes a current through the heating wire which is nichrome and the electrical resistance of it generates heat. So we can control that with a power supply and then use your multimeter to figure out what the temperature is with the other uh, the thermocouple. So I'm just adding some oil here, or liquid, refractive index liquid, to it. And we're going to immerse that and hope that it's pretty near a, uh, a match. And yeah, it looks a little bit junky here, but you can see that the crystal is much harder to see now because it's relatively close to the refractive index of the crystal here. The crystal is close to the refractive index of the liquid. But uh, yeah, got to go back to the settings for alpha those uh, spindle and microscope stage settings. There it is. Now on my spreadsheet I'm going to um, move over to the double variation tab here and enter the Cauchy constants that I determined. This is already referencing those those three constants. So I just referenced the sheet from the oil calibration for those Cauchy constants. I'm going to clear these inputs. Uh, there's a Mazort number and a temperature input. You can use Mazort number or Lambda. Since I'm using a slide monochromator, I'm entering in the Mazort number and, uh, and then the temperature in which it's a match at. 
and we'll uh, see what that looks like physically in a second. But I'm just going to enter these in real quick. Uh, this is what it turned out to be. And then I'll show you what it looks like under the or into the microscope later. Yeah, make sure the DNDT is correct. Um, so as long as the DNDT and the Cauchy constants are right, you can make these entries. And you can change this also if you want to include more entries, but I just made it into three, like a square matrix. And then it'll output in that dark blue at 589.3 what the refractive index is, the corrected for refractive index is of the crystal. So, yeah, so this is what it looks like. Yeah, alpha refractive index is that. So that's our first measurement. That's what the first one turned out to be. Um, and in the biaxial calx tab, you can enter that in. I also, I'll just reference this cell. Yeah, 1.5126. And then I'll create another spreadsheet for beta and gamma. But And then make sure your 2V is correct here. Uh, I'm just going to ref reference the biaxial inputs because this is from our optical determination. So yeah. And this will also calculate what the other, what the odd one out should be. So if you have three of these four entries, it'll always be able to calculate the fourth, at least just a theoretical. And then it'll give you an observed uh, versus calculated difference between them. So, and just uh, to finish this up, uh, beta turned out to be that, and uh, I just got to find what gamma turned out to be in my other spreadsheet. And gamma turned out to be that. 1.51868. And those are the residuals of that, uh, of the observed and calculated. And, um, yeah, there, you can see that that alpha one is pretty off. It's zero, zero, one, almost zero, zero, two. And those other two look good. But in actuality, the alpha one is probably more correct because that's the one that I used the oil calibration on. And those other two were done with the cargo label. So what's happening is, is that the calculation weighting of those two that were probably more erroneous uh, made it so that, that the calculation for alpha was had higher error because it's using beta, gamma, and 2V to c calculate what alpha is. But beta and gamma are probably more wrong because those weren't calibrated because I'm lazy. Um, but yeah, ordinarily you'd want to calibrate all of the liquids that you use, but I didn't for the, the one that I used for the beta and gamma measurement. Oh, and here I'm showing, uh, how to expand your matrix. So just the same thing with the oil calibration. You can just drag it down, expand the number of entries, but you have to expand this matrix also. Um which is referencing this, the inputs on the left. Yeah. And this could be a little bit tricky, but this uh, calculation is uh, made so that it doesn't have to be a square matrix. You can include as many entries as you want. It'll just perform a least squares fit for it. So yeah, if I wanted to include that number of entries, I just drag it down to the same number drag the formulas down and make all those entries and then it will minimize those residuals for the Cauchy constants. But yeah, 
I just wanted to figure out what the the curve was, the dispersion curve was, as you approach 589.3. So I was just interpolating to make good measurements at the standard wavelength for measuring refractive indices. So moving on to our spreadsheet, so we're going to the alpha setting, uh, which is spindle 93, and uh, for the east-west polarizer that I'm using, a uh, microscope stage setting at 198.5. That will align alpha in the east-west plane. And we know the optic sign, so x is equal to ab, x is the same as alpha, z is ob, which is gamma, and y is always on, which is beta. Uh, and you can see that below in the spreadsheet where uh, below the coordinates, where the Cartesian coordinates are listed, uh, once you've entered the optic sign in. So now, for as for what it physically looks like when you're doing this, um, you want to blur the crystal a little bit, like lower the stage, I'd say. So you can see that light is sort of refracting outside the crystal towards the oil as I lower it which means I'm going to want to probably heat the oil up to lower the refractive index of the oil to make it closer to the crystal. And I'm inserting a slide monochromator here so it's going to look colored and kind of funky here. So as I slide it across, you can see that that fringe sort of disappears as I approach red light. But it's, it's a bit out of the uh, visible light spectrum the uh, match in the refractive index. Yeah, it, it's looking purple in the video, but it, it, really the match is probably outside the visible, so I need to heat the oil up. So heating the oil up will lower its refractive index to make it closer to the refractive index of the, chlor of the crystal, because the, the light fringe has refracted out so the Becky line is favoring the oil here. But yeah, this is just sliding the monochromator around while I wait for the, uh, the temperature to climb. So I'm just increasing the uh, current of my uh, power supply little by little trying to heat it up and then once I can tell yeah so you can see here in the red light you could probably make a measurement here if you wanted because I could barely see that crystal now so in green light I can I can see the edge of it pretty easily so it's not matching there So now it's starting to get there in the uh, orange light. So whatever temperature is listed on my uh, thermocouple or on my multimeter reading. Getting a little closer to yellow light here. So I'm just making those, at least those three entries you can look back at what those entries ended up being. Yeah, that's that's a match at around yellow light. So you can see you can see the fringe now in red light. The fringe is on the inside of the crystal and it has a dark border. And then I move across green and then it inverts. So that's how you bracket where the match is. It's like, okay, I can see it in red light, move across to green, and I can see it's on the outside, and the match is like right at yellow. So then I would uh, record what the uh, Mazort number is, reading the right side of the slide mon monochromator, right where the edge of it is. So yeah, that's a pretty good match. But that's why I like to blur the, the crystal a little bit by lowering the stage. 
is I could see the fringe and how it changes as I move across it. And that's that's why this is the most, is probably the best way of doing this other than measuring something with lasers or something like that, is that you could see it in real time as you move the monochromator. But yeah, that's refractive index measurement. And uh, I would do the same thing with um, different orientation. So I do the same thing for beta and a different liquid, make sure, but, um, and then use the spreadsheet to keep track of all this stuff because it's kind of confusing or it's just hectic to keep track of temperature and wavelength and refractive index and looking at it. So that's it for uh, measuring the optical properties.